Friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in the week of October 10th. Happy fall, everybody. And yes, you are at the Wild at Heart podcast. I know the, the music is new for some of you. If you haven't been tracking with us through our Rule of Life series, our Sacred Rhythms, Healing Rhythms series, but we just thought we'd kind of carry on with that for a bit because we want you to experience this podcast as you are experiencing God, that He's meeting you each each time you tune in, each week as you join us, what you end up experiencing is the rich presence of Jesus with you. So we're gonna take a moment, as we've been doing, to first just give everyone and everything to God. Just going to release everyone and everything to Jesus. Your day, what's ahead, what's just happened. Just take a moment and release it all. And now we just pray, Jesus, heal my union with you. Restore our union, Lord. Meet me here today. Nourish me. Strengthen me. Yes, through the stories, through the teaching, but mostly through your presence, God. In my car, with me on this walk, here in my apartment, at the gym. Meet me here. Nourish me here. I need you, God. We just felt that that would be a better way to enter into the podcast in this season. And and I think this week, I think you're going to enjoy what we have for you. We are turning a corner. We're leaving the uh, Rule of Life series in the rearview mirror now. Alex and Alan are with me here this week. Hey, guys. Hey, John. Hey, John. <laughs> and we have we we want to just tell some stories. We We want to circle back around. There is a practice here that has become so ingrained in our lives, such a part of the way we live and operate and make decisions and find joy that we want to put it back on the table for everybody, and that is hearing the voice of God, hearing your Father speak to you, hearing Jesus say stuff to you, (laughs) hearing the Holy Spirit. And it's just been so helpful. It's been a rescue. And I, we just thought, we want to tell you some stories and I talk about this practice again because it's so life-giving. Hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, so, guys, we're just going to jump in with some storytelling and then we'll unpack some things for folks. So, I'm curious about recently, your life, navigating the things you're navigating, what is current and how is how is listening listening for the voice of God trying to tune in trying to to hear him um where's that been helpful lately well i've got a current one a uh, real current this week i was faced with trying to decide a thanksgiving week plan and my mom is 82 years old lives in Texas. And of course, we're here in Colorado, so I don't get to see her as much as I'd like if we were in the same town or or state. And so she is taking a trip, the first trip since COVID hit, so in years, to go see my sister for Thanksgiving, which is in another state. And so my sister's flying down to get her, bringing her to her family. My mom's sister and her family will be there my sister's daughters and and just a ton of related family. And so there's only my sister and me and she invited me to bring my family up and I'll be together. And on the surface, it's a no brainer. You just go, well, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Because my wife and kids have not seen my mom since the funeral of my stepfather three years ago because of COVID and my mom wanting to be cautious. So first time for them to see her literally in about three years. And so the temptation, the gravitational pull guys, you know, is to, well, let's start pricing out 
planes and so and and travel and so we did and let's make the pro and con list of you know well you know here's why we should go but on the other hand and so i found myself getting into that and then we paused and realized we haven't even really asked god anything about this and so there's a lot of ways to rationalize it or to just go forward with it but the more we paused and asked God, the answer was no, no. And that was wow. at first all we didn't get the no and here's the reasons why. Mm. We first just got a mm. no. And so I sat with that and for a day or two, we didn't tell my sister immediately, but we, you know, we wanted to make sure and and so the more we went into it with God and just said, God, tell it like, okay, and now will you share why? And he did, and he said, yeah, your mom needs you sooner than that. Um, and so and so now I'm actually planning to go a few weeks before Thanksgiving to mm. her home mm. to see her. And, and the thing is, it's it's a little bit like a treasure hunt when you – live this way with God, because I have no doubt when I'm there, things are going to happen that would not have happened at my sister's home with yes. a group of 25 people. Yeah. Yes. And it'll just be my mom and me. Yeah. Um, and so it's this beautiful, messy, you know, like it wasn't really understood by everybody why we weren't coming. Um, and it's, there's some awkwardness to that and, and some... Just not tension, but just, you know, like it's just, you, you feel odd. Okay, okay. Hang on. <laughs> we we got to unpack this for a second because this is Thanksgiving. Yeah. This is family. This is mom who's 82, maybe her last big family gathering or at least right. a travel one. Right. Yeah. And so I just want to come back to the momentum in the beginning the momentum must have been, of it, course we're going. There was no pause. It was just like, wow, this is probably a once-in-a-lifetime chance, certainly to see her with everybody else all together in this way. And so the momentum was just open the laptop and start yes. pricing airlines and yeah. blocking time. Yeah. And I would imagine, Alan, there's probably even, even though God has given you some of the picture of why you're not going and the picture of, hey, you actually need to go sooner. She needs you sooner. There's still parts of it you probably don't know the full story of what God is up to. Totally. I don't. And I am learning more to just rest in, but I trust you, God. Like, mm. okay, I don't know all. Mm. And it is a little awkward, and we don't have unlimited travel funds to see her early and to see her Thanksgiving and, and, and. So there has to be some choices. And and so, yeah, to go into it a little bit somber and a little bit saddened because I would love to be with that group for that experience at yeah. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and to have my kids and Kelly see my mom again because it's been a long, long time. Um, and this is this is part of when you ask God, you yes. want to hear, yes. and then you want to follow, and so it's messy. A wild goose, man. And, and the <laughs> thing is, we're gonna we will be able to come back after Thanksgiving and hear the rest of the story. Yeah, I mean the number of family things that got broken up this summer, with even with COVID still, and you know Sam's family trip, you know back and and got busted up early by COVID. And there was mm. great concern for Susie's aging father. And, and, and so who knows? Who knows why God said that? But I'm, I just, I, everybody listening to this is going, Thanksgiving? You can <laughs> mess with Thanksgiving? Like, uh -huh. you can ask God about that? And then the other part of the story I want to unpack for a moment is, was that you and Kelly doing that? Did you make the decision alone? We made it together, but I heard first, and and I think part of that was the kindness of Kelly to to want to leave some space because it's my mother, 
So I think out of kindness, she was saying, you know, yeah, we do need to pause. What are you hearing? And so we went into it together, but I was the one that first heard. And I think it was probably harder in this case for Kelly to hear because, you know, it's it's your spouse's mom, yeah. you know? And, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, but it felt like we reached it together, the decision. We're at total peace. And we don't know what Thanksgiving will look like for us. We're, mm. We don't have the other replacement plan because we weren't trying to fix something. We were just trying to walk well in the messiness. And it's, I mean, my mom understands. She's She's been very gracious, but it's just been a little messy and awkward it, yes, beyond it is. that as it ripples sure. out. Yeah. Listening for the voice of God is fine when it's just you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but as soon as it, uh-huh. you start pulling in other people and plans, like, wow, Alan, that was very risky and beautiful. Yeah. And to be continued. And to yeah. be continued. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So for, for me, uh, more in the current last couple of weeks have been prep for, we've got a captivating that uh, by the time this airs, just probably last weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Probably just happened. And so uh, we've, been prepping for that and man last week I was just feeling the stress of it found myself anticipating a lot coming down the bike for this and so I thank you God for the prompting to do it because I don't always think to do it but I was like God I need I need to hear from you I need need your counsel your words over this captivating what are you saying and uh, immediately what I hear is it won't be too much. And Meaning your workload? My workload won't be too much. It won't be too much yeah. for you. And in the immediate, I could, I could just feel my body relax. Like I, I, was, I was carrying a lot of anticipatory tension. Of like course. There wasn't anything necessarily overwhelming me at that moment. It was more I was just anticipating what was to come. And so to, to hear that from God, it completely shifted the rest of that week and, and this week. And, and I anticipate next week as well because now I'm able to be present. So like, I'm just present to the day and I know what I need to get done today. And I'm not thinking, you know, oh man, I bet there's a big load coming tomorrow. I'm able to just go, Jesus, you said it's not gonna be too much. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I can handle today. Yes. And that's been a, a real rescue of practicing mm. that discipline of listening to God, asking God. Yeah. The idea of I was anticipating yeah. with good reason. I mean, there, oh, there's sure. probably 416 details that <laughs> go into putting on an event like this. Right. There's, uh-huh. it, that wasn't an unfounded fear. Yeah. And it's been a year. Yeah. And speakers are changing their topics and there's yeah. new media and, yeah. you know, on and on it goes. Right. So it wasn't like. No, there's, there's good reason to believe that, that there's going to be a lot. Um, but you know, it's just, I, there's so many instances like that where I just make, I make the assumption and I don't ask God. Yes. And so I was really grateful for that word. This idea of asking for words yeah. can be such an emotional rescue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The number of trips I've gone on where I've been full of that anticipation, you know, we're going to visit in-laws or we're going into a difficult situation, or maybe it's just that we're you know, it's overseas travel or travel into, you know, a less developed country. And I'm like, Jesus, yeah, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and and he'll just say something to me like, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Or I'm in this. And then I can just go, oh, Hmm. now I'm not running through all those scenarios and, and speculating and the emotional energy. Yes. That he just saved me, the intellectual headspace he just saved me. Yes. And have you seen a couple of moments since then, since you heard that, where things had the potential to be overwhelming, but you could then just go, no, I'm good. Oh, yeah. Like uh, one of the 
women on the team reached out to me and I was like, hey, I've got got an idea for something I want to do, but I also want to be sensitive to your time. Like, do you think you could do this piece? And and it was like, yeah, actually, I'm, I think I've got capacity for that. Mm. And, you know, if if I hadn't had that word from from God, I think mm-hmm. I, I think I would have been questioning that a little bit more. And so, yeah, there's been the, those, those little moments, but generally I think the, the biggest thing is like you're saying, John, just that mental shift, like, you know, I'm, a, I'm approaching it a completely different way mentally. Yeah. As I've been thinking about the recent stories for me, I'm relating to these two in the sense, I noticed the amount of margin that I recover hmm. when I ask God. Wow. It can be very practical margin. I wanted to go, we've got a little cabin out in the middle of nowhere here in Colorado. And I mean, it is in the middle of nowhere. It's a four hour drive and there's no internet, there's no phone service that sometimes the power works, but it's monastic. It's, yeah. you know, you, you gotta, if the mice haven't taken over, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. There's no television there. You don't even have cell service there. And so I was just making the assumption, I'm going this weekend, I'm going. And I check in with Jesus and he says, no, no, not this weekend. Hmm. And initial disappointment, but then reality sets in of, I would have been scrambling to get there and having to come back early. Yeah. And instead I just, I just got a whole weekend back hmm. in terms of just margin. We are heading into some international travel later this year, and we're going to do some mission work, but we also have some colleagues and some friends in some neighboring countries there in Europe. And again, it was sort of that Thanksgiving no-brainer thing of like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, if you're going to all the effort to get over there, you know, go see your friends or go hold an event in this town. And I asked Jesus about it, and he just went, no, no, none of that. Yeah. Rescue. Yeah. I, I was about to dogpile this trip, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yep. And it would have been exhausting. And so, yeah, just I'm just thinking through, and these are no stories, and I have yes stories as well, but even down to something as simple, the margin I'm getting back, the number of times this week I have asked Jesus, hey, sh- should I give so-and-so a call? And he goes, no, they're fine. I go, whoa, I just got an evening back. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm recognizing it in emotional margin for you. Yes, right. Right. And big holiday family margin for you. And I'm getting it in these small spaces as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Right? We do it for joy. We do it for rescue. We do it for wisdom. Please counsel us on things. We, But we wanted to begin telling some stories because it's so encouraging to hear other people say, really? Wow, you can ask that? You can invite God into your Thanksgiving? You you can invite God into your day? You can invite God into your emotions? Like, wait a second, that that would be wonderful. Yeah. But it's so easy any given moment of any given day to just plow ahead, right? Like you, (sighs) for all of us, it's almost like, oh yeah, I didn't ask God, or (laughs) whoa, wait a minute, let's back up, rather than sometimes leading with that. Like it's, God waits to be asked, you know? Mm. And and if we just plow ahead, Mm. then we plow into a lot of not good stuff. Yeah, Ellen, when when John sent us the message saying, hey, would you guys come in the podcast studio? Let's talk about some stories of how you've been hearing (laughs) God, listening to God lately and and uh, in the past and and so I you know I sat down to kind of think through eh, what stories would I want to share and I started realizing oh my gosh I make so many assumptions like I don't actually don't ask God as much as maybe I should <laughs> and yeah. and it, and it was it, it was a little it was a little eye opening to me and and in a good way like I'm 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 encouraged already yeah. By going, oh man, there's so many ways. I just kind of run ahead and go, well, yeah, of course I'm supposed to do that, and I, and I don't stop and 
and ask God. And I think I'm, I do miss out on a lot of mm. rescues or diversions mm. that, that God, you know, I, I think he's still kind. I think yes. he's still, he's, he's still helping me, mm-hmm. you know, in my life and, and things are working in a, in a direction that God's involved in. But I, but I think I miss out on some treasures, quite honestly. There's a momentum. <laughs> yeah. There, that, just to yeah. name that, there is a momentum to things. Yeah. That, there's just a momentum to our day. Yeah. And, you know, by, by nine o'clock, I'm in blast. Yeah. Right. I'm in blast mode. I may have had a lovely, quiet time with Jesus a couple hours earlier in the morning, but I'm, I, there's things to get done. Yeah. 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 And then there's real momentum to family things, holiday things, work things, you know, expectations, other people waiting on you. So, yes, the natural gravitational pull is not to practice listening for God's voice. What do you think about this, Lord? What do you think about that? When people are in a hurry for something back from you in terms of a response, and you say, I'm just waiting until I hear from God. <laughs> that's that's not like the okay, you know, <laughs> normal pattern for most human life. So it it's like throwing kind of a shockwave through the whole uh-huh. dynamic of what's going on. But honestly, I'm trying to say that more because in the past I might have just said, well, I, you know, I need a little more time to think through it or we just haven't had a chance to get together yet, Kelly, and I need mm-hmm. to – and just to kind of own to the world the weirdness of going, I'm still asking God and I don't know the answer yet. It is disruptive, but it's it's true. Can we get t-shirts? Own the weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> own the weirdness. Yeah, no question. And now, now actually, I, I enjoy the weirdness. I do. Like, my publisher is on me right now. You know, Resilient <laughs> has gotten such a wonderful response. And yes. People are really, really finding it helpful. And so they're like, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And, and my response is, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not what most authors are trained to say when a publisher asks that. I honestly yeah. have no idea. Yeah. I haven't heard from God yet. Your publisher needs to write a book on what it's like to work <laughs> with you because there are so many moments you disrupt that world in ways that they aren't used to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's another category, category of play. Hearing the voice of God in the category of play. Has there been some joy there? Has there been some goodness this year? And yeah. Going back to just the summer, some of the listeners remember that uh, I'd been longing for the ocean and hadn't been in six years and so didn't think I was going to be able to do it last summer, but was just holding it loosely. And we're getting an April, May timeframe, which is getting late to try to plan a a beach trip, you know, in, in Florida or wherever it would be. And so I was just praying and saying, God, will you just tell me? Tell me if we're, because, I mean, our kids are getting older. They have plans, jobs, college. If we're going to coordinate this and what God would say, and it was, it felt very playful, although at the time it was a little nerve-wracking, was, mm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to show you. And so to be clear, he spoke. Right. And what you heard was. I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah. So I kind of filled in the blank of, I'm not going to tell you. But yeah. I was saying, we just tell me, tell me, give me a yes or no. Yeah. Like, I just want to hear. And unlike the Thanksgiving situation where I did hear a no quickly, and sometimes we hear yes to things, I didn't hear a yes or no, just I'll show you. And so it, it felt like God was inviting me to just be eyes open, have a sense of wonder and expectancy. But the flesh part of me was like, come on, come on, come on, because it's getting closer and closer. And I, and so I'm watching and waiting and feel like it's probably not going to happen, but he was going to show me, but he didn't say he was going to show me yes. It, he could be showing me no. And so over time, it, it ended up being a really beautiful month because 
piece by piece, he would show me that he was inviting me to the ocean. So it started with getting invitation from uh, this family that we had never met, but um, they follow the ministry and and the podcast. And so they said, we'd love for you to come stay at our place. And I was like, that's it. And then, but I knew that wasn't quite it because then it's like, but wait a minute, the travel costs, the flights, the- For a family? For a family, like you're talking $3,000 to get the, just the flights. And so there's a place now, but you know, the rest of the P and God's like, I'll show you. And a week or two later, this this wild story. This doesn't happen to me regularly. Uh, so when I'm saying this, it, it's it was a very unique experience. But a few weeks later, a guy calls up and says, "Hey, where are you going for summer?" And I said, "Well, I don't know. I there's a trip I feel like God's talking to me about, but it, it's we're super expensive to fly, and I don't I don't know." And he goes, "Well, actually, that's why I'm calling. God just told me to call." to tell you that I'm supposed to help with your travel wherever you're going. Now, I've never had that happen wow. in my life. Not once, ever. Wow. Never looking for that. And then that happened a few weeks later with a second person mm-hmm. saying, whatever your travel is, we're supposed to help with that. And so God was just, it got to the point where Kelly and I were laughing around the table going, to not go on the trip, which, like God has done everything but literally transport us you know, to the beachfront. Uh, and But it was a playful step by step by step at God's pace in his timing. He wasn't going to be rushed. And he actually, I think, wanted to woo me into something that I had been waiting and longing for for six years. And the very last thing, so it's the, it's the night before we have to pull the trigger. And even with all that, I'm like, well, I, I think so, <laughs> but I mean, and I, I wasn't waiting for more necessarily from God, but I was just hesitant to pull the trigger. And so I'm on a Zoom call and I'm in my study at home and behind me is this uh, painting of an ocean wave and it's been there for years. And so I'm talking to this person on a Zoom call and she says, hey, I just feel like I'm supposed to tell you something. She goes, can you move your head a little bit to the side? And I kind of moved my head and she, she wanted to see the ocean picture. And she goes, God is just telling me that that frame can't contain the ocean that he has for you. And, <laughs> and, and that's not enough for right now. And I'm like, we're doing it. We're going to Florida. Um, but it, I mean, it was the process that was so playful and fun of how yeah. God continued through other people to show me what he had for me. Alan, what I'm struck by in your story is not only was it an opportunity for you to walk with God, listen to God, but that's such an intimate story. Like the intimacy of your relationship with God, like you have to have come out of that with a deeper love for who he is and how he operates in your life. Like Uh, it's, that's holy. I I was in tears multiple times because of the intimacy. Mm. And what a lot of people don't know about me is I'm really pretty introverted. And so in some ways it makes me uncomfortable when people invite me to their place or pay for something where some people might be like, that is the coolest thing Mm -hmm. on the surface. I'm like, take a step back because uh, it's hard for me to receive sometimes. So even that process, Mm. God was going after something deep within me of you can receive from me, but you really have a hard time receiving when it comes my gifts come through others. Mm -hmm. And even that was this initiation process. Wow. Alan, something else that is so good in that story as our listeners are processing their own stories and their own longings and their own needs right now for direction and guidance and hope and, and the things that they would love from God, that you can really sabotage it if you demand an answer immediately. Yeah. Right? Like right. don't force the process. Yeah. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes things unfold over time. Now, often, often God will speak. You know, he told you, Alex, hey, don't sweat, don't sweat the work this week. 
Yeah. What was the word again? It was, you'll be okay. It won't won't be too much. It won't be too much. And you just heard that in the moment and it was the gift, right? And and that's that's very common for God to say things like that. But sometimes he he likes to do it over time, right? And you you had an unfolding story this summer as well. Yeah. In Alaska, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there were, there were definitely pieces to it. So Mel, and I, and I think, um, I described part of this in a, in another podcast, but Mel and I had our 25th anniversary this summer. And so it it felt like a big, big summer, big moment, wanted to honor that 25 years with, with something special, which felt like a trip. And I guess that was a assumption we were making, but so you know, Mel and I were batting around all kinds of ideas. And the idea of Alaska had come up in our conversation. And I'm not like as much as fellow outdoorsmen listening would think, I don't get jazzed about Alaska, or at least then I did not get jazzed about Alaska. I've heard stories and and it just it wasn't something that was on my radar in a like, oh man, I can't, I have to go there someday. Like, and, that. and this would be perfect for my 25th. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm thinking beach, Bahamas, like, I, you know, that's the kind of, that context of trip I would really of enjoy. Of course. And so Mel, Mel and I um, kind of, kind of together, but also separately, like, okay, well, you pray, I'll pray. Let's see. Let's see what God's telling us on where we should go. And we both came around to. I, I think we're supposed to go to Alaska for our twenty fifth. And so I was like, okay. Like I didn't know is this is this going to be good or not? But uh, but it felt like a okay. God's got something for us there, so we'll we'll go. And man, like just at a thirty thousand foot level, like. It, it was a phenomenal trip. Like there, there was so much goodness in that trip and God met us along the way on it um, in, in amazing ways. Uh, you know, the, the weather was one of them. We were getting ready to go and the entire time we're there, it's showing that it's going to rain the entire time. And yep. I'm like, you know, I don't know that we heard from God because <laughs> to go hang out in the rain for not the Bahamas. No, no. And like 50s and 60s. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna be freezing to death and in the rain. This is not gonna be fun. And um, and oh my gosh, like the what the weather just started changing day by day. Like first day, weather weather forecast changes for that day, and it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. And so we have this phenomenal drive down the co- the coast of the Kenai Peninsula, and we're seeing the volcano across. Um, I forget what that's that uh, sound is called there, but across the water, um, miles and miles and miles away, and it's clear, and you can see the snow capped volcano, and um, and it's just gorgeous. It's at the peak of summer and the flowers are growing in the fields and, mm. um, and it's lush and beautiful. And so it was, it was, it was such a gift and, and each moment on the trip, it was like that. It was like, yeah, but then the rain's going to start here. And then the rain backed up mm. wow. later and, and, and the, you know, the place that they had told us there, you are going to have rain, no doubt. Seward, Alaska, like you will have rain, just be ready. And we're like, okay, that's, you know, that's fine. That's the end of our trip. And the sun comes out and there's blue sky. And we were doing a, a kayak kayak trip on the ocean. And our guide is like beaming because she's like, it's been raining for so long. and such a beautiful day. This is wonderful. Like we had so much fun. So um, yeah, just you know, that was a rescue, right? It was the perfect 25th anniversary trip. And then in the middle of that trip, we had a moment where, you know, God, God kind of nudged me going, Hey, we, um, originally we were planning to stay with some friends in the middle of the trip. And I just felt God's nudging of, Hey, you should, you should book a VRBO for that part of the trip. And I'm like, ah, I can't do that. It'd be rude. Like they've already offered for us to stay, and like totally. I'm 
telling them last minute that we're not not going to stay with them and that'll sound weird and like but I, but I felt God prompting and I'm like okay God like I trust you and um and so we look we find this place on a lake and and uh up north of where they live and and so I I sent a message and I'm like hey um you know feel like God's telling us we should we should stay at this VRBO and and so we're going to do that and uh can't wait to see you. We're still going to spend some time with you, but we're going to stay at this VRBO. And I, I still felt bad doing it. Yeah. And uh, only after the fact did I find out that they were actually, I didn't know this. They were actually that week in the process of selling their house. So they were staging their home for showings to, to be sold. He was going through a job change that week and so it was like, oh my gosh, we would have hit your house with all this <laughs> stress that you guys are under, and like, and and they were being super kind of like they didn't tell us that because they did, they didn't want us to worry about that, but yeah. but like God knew, and yes. God was there for them, and God was there for us, and like, wow. and it was just this win win, yeah. And so um, yeah, it was really really a beautiful story of walking mm -hmm. with God. Friends, we're just going to take a moment. Uh, and play some music and let you sit with whatever is being stirred in you as you listen to these stories. There is so much more uh, that we want to say. We actually have more stories to tell and, and some stories with bigger implications to them. You know, there's kind of the casual listening and then there's the, the really big uh, questions of life listening and, and is this really in the Bible and all that. So, but I think we're at a good place to, to say, get curious, friends. Like Alex was admitting, we all listen, but we don't listen often mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's inviting you back to listen more. And for some of you, this is a new frontier in your life with God. And just to begin to ask him, oh Lord, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear your voice. Teach me, teach me to hear your voice. Isaiah says, you open my ear every morning, open my ear like one being taught. Mm -hmm. And of course, that famous passage in Revelation where Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and we will share a meal together like mm. good friends. <laughs> 